Year to date, they're whoa! Oh my god! Five year ca that five year ca guys. We def look at that five year cag. Now, when it comes to the shares, outstanding. I was really hoping to see something different. I really, really was. Hello, my fellow investors, and welcome back to another viewer requested video. Guys, I'm gonna keep doing these because the month of June just started, and all these stocks that I have here is for the month of May. I think that's the best way that I can kind of make this, I guess, viewer requested kind of series more fair i guess you could say because if i just keep adding stocks that people keep asking for even after the month is over the over well that the chances of the stocks that haven't been chosen yet will go down so for now what, what i'm planning to do is for the month i'm going to collect a bunch of stocks i'm going to do them for the month and then after that after we do all of them then i'm going to put in the new ones for the month that those ones were asked for okay so i know that you guys have asked for well i know two of you guys have asked for two already however we need to get through these because if i add to the ones here well i mean the chances of choosing like for example trox that has been there for a while now is very very small so i rather to keep it more fair i'm going to just do it this way so with that said let's spin the wheel to see what stock we should analyze from a fundamental perspective And it just barely hit the company PBF. All right, guys, this company was brought up by, let me see if I can find it, PBF, PBF, PBF. It was brought up by Tony. Tony, we got you, man. All right, so let's uh, let's take a look at this company. By the way, here is the comment where you asked this. Uh, let's take a look at this company from a fundamental lens and see if the current share price is looking like a good buy based on a discounted free cash flow approach. All right, everybody, and this is the company, well, PBF Energy. So it's an energy company, and y'all know I do love my energy companies. I really do hope that this one has pretty decent fundamentals because, man, I, I really do like my energy companies. For all of those of you who don't know, my best performing company so far to date in, you know, since I actually started this dividend investing kind of way of investing is none other than Chevron. So, yeah, let's uh, let's see what this actually tells us. Now, let's actually take a look at the company profile because, okay, it is an energy company, but I kind of want to see what they actually do. So, we got over here, PBF Energy, together with its subsidiaries, engages in refining and supplying petroleum products. The company operates in two segments, refining and logistics. It produces gasoline, ultra low sulfur diesel, heating oil, diesel fuels. Okay, so I really do like this. The fact that they're in the, the refining business, right? So they are mainly downstream, which is okay. Um, I guess downstream is a little bit better seeing that they're not the one, at least they're, they're not the main ones pulling the oil from the ground, right? So the oil will get sent to them and then they refine it and then they, you know, uh, ship it out, right? That's the refining and the logistics part of it. So not too bad. Actually, I prefer my midstreams. That's my that's like the best one. That's the one that's most insulated from the price of oil fluctuating. But I guess downstream is the second best. Now, guys, please remember that when it comes to any of these commodity based companies, they always tend to follow their respective commodities. Just keep that in mind. All right. Now, let's check out these earnings because they just had earnings on the fifth. And well, they beat on all metrics by a decent amount. EPS normalized actual $2.76 beat by 16 cents. EPS gap actual $2.86 by 25 cents revenue actual 9.3 billion which is beat by 903.8 million dollars so let's jump guys into the discounted free cash flow we got the ticket for pbf market cap of 4.5 billion with a pe of 1.39 current share price of 35 dollars and 68 cents guys just based on this pe alone this is looking amazing completely amazing now again oil has had quite a ride at least as of 2022 man that's the reason why chevron is my best company however as of recently guys if you notice oil company has been falling down a decent amount at least when it comes to chevron i've noticed that one but i wonder if maybe now that things are starting to somewhat settle down I wonder if now a company like this, maybe they're going to start losing when it comes to their earnings, when it comes to their net income, when it comes to their free cash flow, and of course their revenue. And of course, looking at the one-year graph, we can see that 
on the one year they're up 3.66 year to date they're down whoa 5.01 not 52 week lows but you can see that the lowest point was 24 dollars and 63 highest is 49 on the dot on the 52 week so let's come back into this kind of free cash flow. we do see that they do pay out 60 cents in annual dividends which is a yield of eh, it's a tiny yield 1.63 percent a payout ratio of 1.56 oh my god five-year that five-year guys we def look at that five-year CAG group negative 13 so we definitely have to take a look at this now if i had to guess actually I'm a, i want to make a guess first all right let's make a guess that the reason why this occurred it was because of 2020 let's see was there a cut or a suspension of that dividend during 2020 i'm only guessing here Wow, do I, can I, I swear to God, I swear to God, I did not look at this in advance. Boom, there it is, right there, complete cut as of, yeah, I mean, as of, like, the last time they paid it was February 23rd, 2020, and we know what happened, well, we know what happened in March, and they only reinstated it back as of, what, November 9th, 2022, about well, wow, about 10 cents less from 30 cents down to 20 cents. So there it is, guys. Now, I am curious, though, if we take a look at this on the one year, um, you know what? Interesting. So let's see. Interesting. So they do not have a habit of increasing this dividend. They have their thing is like, here it is. 30 cents at least from when they started paying out dividend in february 28 2023 uh, sorry 2013 they kept it at 13 cents pretty much well, actually all throughout up until the suspension because of covid and then they reinstated it back at 20 cents my question is are they going to bring it back up to 30 or are they going to keep it at 20 cents most likely 20 cents but they are very very consistent with it so coming back into this dividend summary guys we can see that well i mean obviously dividend growth zero years ex dividend date Passed as of May 16th. Payout date was on May 31st. So yesterday, as I'm recording this, it is June 1st. And they pay their dividends quarterly. Looking back into this, we can see that based off the current shares outstanding and this 60 cents in dividends, they pay out $76 million, which after this is paid out in their five-year average free cash flow, they're left with $830.1 million. In regards to the five, sorry, in regards to their last year's free cash flow, it is $4.1 billion left, guys. That is massive. From 830 to 4.1 that's huge now last year's free cash flows payout ratio is 1.83 five-year average it is 8.3 guys these payout ratios are super small so they can afford this thing they can they can even afford to even increase it by 10 more cents but i don't know if they might i really don't know so let's take a look at this fundamental starting with the net income Okay, I oh this is gonna be a really tough one, guys. We got five years ago of 128.3 million to one year ago of oh, dear god, almost three billion dollars. That is an increase of two thousand percent. Now we do see a massive drop three years ago, and then the massive spike one year ago. The problem with this is it's not actually a problem at all. Well, it is a problem because it makes it very difficult to analyze. But the issue with this is both of these are perfectly explainable, right? Obviously, COVID, lack of demand for oil. I mean, oil, the, the, the price for a barrel of oil went to as low as negative 30. So that explains that, right? And of course, one year ago, well, oil prices hit an all-time high last year. So that explains why, too. The problem is, is that I have no idea where this is going. I really don't. Like, I really don't because this is, this is a tale of they crashed because of something that wasn't in their control. And then they rose because of something that wasn't in their control. I don't know where to put this. I really, really don't. So once again, guys, very, very close to the price of their respective commodity. And de depending on what oil does, as you can see right here, this is a perfect example as they will follow. So because of this, I have to, oh man, I have to give this a 50%. I you know what? I'm going to give them a little bit higher just because from five to four, they increased it a little bit. So I'm going to give them a 55%. But I have no clue where this net income might go in the future, guys. Looking now into the free cash flow, we see the exact same thing. We got five years ago, $462.1 million. Two, one year ago, $4.14 billion. Increase of 796%, with an average of $906 million. Once again, three years ago, going negative, massive spike. One year ago, everything is explainable. I'm going to give them, guys, a 55% for the exact same reasons of the net income. And, of course, looking at the revenue, well, 
Um, this one's interesting because we got five years ago of 27.2 billion to one year ago of 46.8 billion, increase of 72.26%. We do see here the crash three years ago. We do see the massive spike from two to one year ago. However, the, my pause comes from the decrease in the revenue from five to four years ago, 27.2 to 24.51. So for that reason, I'm going to have to give this thing a little bit lower of a grade. I would say around like a 45%. Looking now into the assets minus the liabilities. This one's looking absolutely perfect eh, in the sense that obviously three and two year ago is perfectly understandable. Aside from the three and two year ago, guys, was which again, not their fault. COVID, right? COVID. Lack of demand for oil. Because of that reason, guys, you can see that this isn't looking too bad. Average total assets, it is 11.6 billion. Average liabilities, it is 7.86 billion. Doing this difference, we get $3.73 billion. Okay, so here's the thing, right? I, I'm i not going to fault them too much for this three and two years, or I'm not going to fault them at all for this three and two years ago, but I am going to fault them for the massive spike from four to one year ago. You can see at 3.58 to five so i'm going to say guys at around don't get me wrong it's a really really good assets minus liability it really is it really really is but i would if it wasn't for that massive spike i would give it like a i would give it like a 95 percent because of that spike i'm going to give this thing an 85 percent looking now into the cash flow minus the liabilities not surprising that three years ago obviously the cash flow was really bad right that was the lowest year but after that you see that they brought it back and even as of one year ago they brought it back even more in fact it was their lowest year as of well actually it's their second lowest year their lowest year was five years ago at four sorry negative 4.3 billion and one year ago was negative 4.35 billion still though significantly lower than their average of negative six billion dollars now i'm gonna have to give this thing i would say at around like an 80 percent because again you do see a decrease here from five to four years ago but then they recovered it back, not to the point of it being higher than, you know, five years ago, but they did recover back. So that's why I'm giving it an 80%. Now, when it comes to the shares outstanding, I was really hoping to see something different. I really, really was. We got five years ago of 119.9 million shares to today of 126.5 million shares. It's an increase of five and a half percent. However, from the previous year to the current year, it is a decrease of negative 2.4%. The problem with this is, well, you can see that they have had instances of buyback, like you can see right here, five to four, tiny, tiny buyback, and then of massive jumps, like from four to three, and even, I wouldn't even say that much, but from two to one, that was a pretty big dilution, 120.3 to 129.6, but then they bought it back from 129.6 to 126.5. So I'm going to have to give this thing, the trend of this to go up. So I'm going to give this thing, guys, I would say at around like a, uh, 55%. I'm going to give this thing a 55% because the trend it is to go up. Not a lot though, but you know, in, in five years, five and a half percent, it could be worse, but I, yeah, no, I would prefer if they were at least were to buy back. Yeah, that's just the way that I see it. So lastly, when it comes into the cash and clearance, they currently hold 1.6 billion with an average of 1.4 billion. All right, guys. And as we can see here, when it comes to the overall grade, we can see that we gave an income of 55, free cash of 55, revenue 45, assets minus liabilities 85, cash minus liabilities 80, and shares outstanding of 55. Overall grade of 59%. It's pretty mediocre. My main issue is I have no idea where this is going. That's that's the main problem is because every spike and decline that we saw is explainable to, well, let's face it, the lack of demand for oil during COVID and then the massive amount of demand uh, and not enough oil preceding COVID. So that explains that. So that's why I'm just like, I don't know where this is going. It's 59% though. Not too bad. I, my main issue is their revenue really is just that. Just the could be better. But aside from that, honestly, it's not even that bad either. So 59%, this really is a 50-50 kind of company. So let's actually take a look at what the discounted free cash flow says. Now, not I'm putting anything, guys. We can see that not adjusting for debt, it is $19.34. And adjusting for debt, it is $27.93. So adjusting for debt, we're almost there to the current share price of $35.68. So let's take a look at this. So for Seeking Alpha is saying that the revenue forward is estimated for 9.3%. That's crazy. And the sector median is 12.2. So let's be a little bit more conservative when it comes to that. Let's say for the lowest assumption, let's say 7%. For the median, let's go to 9, right? Let's go to 9, so let's go up by 2, and then 11%. Now for the projected share buyback. Well, they've been issuing at around 
five percent so i'm actually gonna put that as that of the lowest so let's say negative five let's say negative three and let's say negative one percent the negative just means that they're issuing and with this guys we got the target share price of 23 dollars 51 to 28 dollars essentially and then adjusting for debt 31 dollars 68 to 36 dollars 47 5 10 and 15 percent margin on safety 27 dollars to 34 dollars 65 cents all right so pretty much just well you're very, very close, guys. Not adjusting, sorry, adjusting for debt, you're very, very close to the current share price. And even one of them is set, telling us that today it is looking very, very, well, not, I want to say very cheap. It is looking cheap, right? But the problem with this is, is that 11% revenue growth. I don't, I don't know, man, because it really just depends as to what oil does. So these are just my numbers. Obviously, guys, this is not financial advice. Every investment is the present value of all future cash flow. And this is why we give everything for free here, at least on my end, right? I give all of this out for free because, well, I want you guys to make your own financial decisions. I don't want you copying me. And by the way, this is not due diligence. Please do not take this as due diligence. And please do not take my calculators as the end-all be-all. You do have to do your own due diligence you do have to read unfortunately you do have to read the 10 ks you do have to read you know their earnings and if you don't want to do any of that guys then just do uh, you know just invest in the in the indexes right spy voo etc but if you want to invest into individual companies then you have to at least know some kind of basis for them which is what my whole channel is about right just the bare minimum to understand of what a company does well not what a company does but what a company's financials are so yeah, you guys can have all this for free. Link is in the description below. Change the numbers up. See what you get. You guys can get the weighted grades for yourselves too. You know, see what grades you got. But guys, the only thing that we're asking for in return is just like, subscribe, comment. It really does help with the algorithm on YouTube. Thank you so much for everybody who has viewed subscribed commented we really really do appreciate it everybody and you know if you like this kind of content that is the best way that you guys can help us so again thank you so much for everybody who has done that so far let's take a look at this dividend now because 60 cents and 1.6 percent isn't a lot but let's entertain this if we put in five thousand seven hundred and twenty five dollars this that's us 96 dollars and 28 cents in annual dividends eh, could be better honestly and of course if we take a look at the options chains well they look it looks like they have monthly options which is interesting the nearest one is actually on june 16th and we can see here that the premiums are okay when it comes to the puts and the calls look even better and again this isn't a company that has a massive dividend so if you do have 100 shares and you do want to sell cover call and have it be executed then you might as well be willing to do that obviously i'm not telling you guys what to do i'm just saying an option if you want to get rid of this company and still have a premium as well as a gain as well so thank you so much for the recommendation tony I love my energy companies. This one, though, it's I have no idea where it's going. I, I really, really don't. So it's not one of the big ones. So, yeah, I I just don't know. This is the first time I ever hear of them, actually. So but anyways, guys, that pretty much does it for this video. You guys can follow us on the new tech site. Link is in the description below. So with that said, peace out, and we'll see you all next time.